Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for that introduction, Rachel. Um, it's great to be here. The one time I attended the I attended the conference in person uh, was in 2020, and I have to say that uh, the RBFF conference is kind of a permanent marker in my mind for when everything started to change with COVID. So um, I remember flying back from Atlanta, wondering just how nervous I should start feeling. Um, but I'm glad things are getting back to normal. Um, and I'm happy to be here uh, presenting today on behalf of the Massachusetts Division of Fisheries and Wildlife to talk about our 2021 fishing campaign. Um, Nicole McSweeney, Mass Wildlife's Marketing and Outreach Manager, led this project and many other folks helped out with various parts of the effort. So like many others, our 2021 campaign was designed to build on the momentum generated by our 2020 outreach efforts and the surge in outdoor participation that was sparked by the pandemic. As always, our goal was to drive sales and build awareness and specifically to retain anglers who went fishing in 2020. And um, to reach that goal, um, we started by analyzing the license trends from 2020. And after analyzing, we developed three target audience groups. The first was anglers who had not held a license prior to 2020. In 2020, 30% of all fishing licenses were purchased by brand new customers. Compared to a four year average, 2020 saw a nearly 60% increase in new customers. Among first time anglers, female participants uh, were up nearly 50% compared to a four year average. And we know females tend to churn more than other groups, so we knew that we wanted to pay special attention to new women anglers. And interestingly, we noticed that our three-day fishing licenses were up 28% as compared to 2019, indicating that folks were interested and wanting to give fishing a try. Our next target audience was uh, 2020 reactivated anglers. Those were not active in 2019, but came back in 2020. About half of all 2020 license sales were made by these reactivated customers. And it's particularly important to support this group of anglers since we know that they've already lapsed at least once. And finally, we didn't want to overlook our retained anglers who bought in 2019 and in 2020, who accounted for almost 20% of our 2020 license sales. Now, to reach those audiences, we used targeted emails, Facebook and Instagram ads, Google search ads, and Google display, and for the first time, YouTube ads. Now we'll take a look at our budget. And right off the bat, we'd like to acknowledge and thank RBFF for the $20,000 grant we received to support this project. Uh, I'll also note that as in past years, we worked with an advertising agency to assist with our strategy and with ad buying. We spent just under $10,000 on that agency fee about 21,000 on social media ads, about 20,000 on Google search, 6,500 on display, and 1,300 on YouTube ads. And I'll say the ad spend breakdown was based for the most part on our learnings from past campaigns and also um, somewhat on recommendations from the, the advertising agency. And our total spend was just under 60,000. I'm noticing this might be an old slide deck, but I'll do I'll do uh, do the best that I can. Might be missing a few things down down the uh, road, but um, okay. So now we'll take a closer look at our um, campaign strategy and content. This is our fifth. This is our fifth year. Last year, excuse me, was our fifth year doing digital marketing. Each year, we maintain and refresh. Uh, the most effective components of previous campaigns and introduce new content and messaging. And I'd like to pause here to mention that we were thrilled to take advantage of the new fishing images that were taken as part of an EFL marketing grant 
funded in part by RBFF. Uh, I've included a lot of those images here in this presentation. Um, the, phys the, the new photos show a variety of really vibrant uh, fishing locations and allowed us to show more angler diversity than we had ever done before. So really glad to have those great photos. In 2021, our social ads fell into three main categories, uh, three general themes, if you will, where to go, the benefits of fishing and uh, resources for improving fishing skills. Now we know from research, uh, including the recent RBFF Ipsos report, that finding a place to fish is so important to new and reactivated anglers. We focused last year on messaging around finding a convenient local place to fish. And with the pandemic still in effect, the idea of recreating locally was even more important. We continued on this theme of where to go by promoting our Go Fish MA digital fishing map. This was really the first time that we had promoted the map through our, our um, spring outreach campaign. The map can be used by anglers of all skill levels to find a local fishing spot and to find trout stock waters, get detailed information um, on a particular pond, and really just kind of find a spot close to them uh, and uh, kind of broaden, broaden their understanding of uh, you know, great places to recreate. The agency, our agency has devoted a lot of time to developing this map and making improvements based on user feedback, and it's become a valuable tool for us and for our customers. One of the features that is also really great is um, our digital depth information. Uh, the map also shows boat, boat ramps, and so we took that opportunity to uh, promote the map to anglers who were interested in taking, uh, taking boats out as well, which is something new for us. And finally, um, as far as where to go, rounding out that theme, consistent with previous years, we took advantage of the always popular string, spring trout stocking season with messages about where to find trout. We made a new stocking video and refreshed our web content. We created trout fishing tips specific to our four types of trout, of trout that we stock. And this was really the first time that we had devoted so much effort to developing this kind of detailed trout fishing skills content. Our campaign extended into August this year. And as a result, we were able to promote opportunities for people to fish well into the fall. We created tips for fishing for bass and trout during the fall. Now all of this new content did well during the campaign, but it also did well organically. In fact, uh, trout fishing tips were among our most highly trafficked pages across our entire Mass Wildlife website in 2021. We also promoted the benefits of fishing, relaxation and fun, quality time with friends and family, and connecting with nature. And we timed these ads to correspond to special days like Father's Day, Memorial Day, our free fishing weekend and the end of the school year. We also promoted the value of fishing license fees to conservation activities in Massachusetts. This message consistently does well for us and it's also an important message for our agency to promote. Next on to skills information. And we focused a lot of time last year on promoting classes. First time we'd, we had really done that. And uh, we thought that was important because especially uh, since in 2020, we didn't have the option for in-person classes and all those new anglers had really missed out on the chance uh, to get that great hands-on training that our angler ed classes provide. So our in-person learn to fish event locations were selected based on zip codes with high license sales growth in 2020. Many were in high population and urban areas. 
And since we knew that women made up such a large percentage of new anglers in 2020, we set up some women-only fishing events through our Becoming an Outdoors Woman program. We promoted classes through social ads and also sent targeted emails. We had a lot of fun using our RBFF Mobile First Catch Center at many of the events in 2021. With lingering COVID concerns, we needed to limit the number of event participants, so we required event registration. Uh, and that was kind of provided us an added benefit of having the email addresses of the participants, and that allowed us to send follow-up messages with phishing resources to class participants. We're really looking forward to more formally establishing this type of communication through our new events management system, which I'll talk about in a bit. As usual, we sent a reminder email to lapsed anglers. We also created a lot of new fishing content which I mentioned a little bit before, uh, to send out through our general newsletter list. Uh, just our, our general newsletter list has over 100,000 uh, recipients. Some are license holders, some are not. Uh, every month we had something new. We had our trout fishing tips and tricks, how to plan a Mother's Day fishing trip, how to set up your fishing rod, and a list of great places to fish near wildlife management areas. So we really took the time to develop a lot of content um, and took time to promote it throughout the spring and summer and even into the early fall. We also spread the word about Free Fishing Weekend through a press release and billboard PSAs, which were shown across Massachusetts. Uh, this PSA billboard messaging was free to us and offered by the Massachusetts Department of Transportation. Now on to Google search. Uh, our Google search campaign focused on license purchase and license renewal. And we also spent um, some time focusing on our renewal ads in zip codes of neighboring states with historically higher license sales. At the time of our campaign, travel restrictions were easing uh, and non-residents were more likely interested in uh, regional or day trip types of recreation in Massachusetts. Some of our budget was also focused on awareness searches like fishing spots near me. And for the most part, we used responsive ads and expanded text ads. for a sec. Our Google display ads were designed to retarget customer lists and visitors to our website. They were also shown to customer lookalike lists and some display were shown to people classified as outdoor enthusiasts. These are people with interests in camping, hiking, and fishing equipment. A smaller portion of the budget was spent on YouTube ads, retargeting audiences that had already interacted with our other campaigns. This was our first time uh, advertising through uh, YouTube in 2021. Now on to our results. Now remember the goal in 2021 was retention. And um, when we looked at retention, uh, what we found was that churn rates were higher in 2021 than in 2020. That's 52% versus 44% for all fishing license types. And fishing license sales were also lower in 2021 as compared to 22, which was disappointing. Uh, but digging a little further, we found that 2021 sales were still higher than pre-pandemic levels. So made us feel a little bit better. Um, and when we think about evaluating our results, it's, it's obviously we're all struggling with how to evaluate results in relation to 2020. Of course, that bump 
in 2020 can be attributed to, you know, that change in behavior of the pandemic and other activities being restricted. And so as more businesses and recreational opportunities reopened in 2021, there's a real challenge to attract and maintain that same level of interest. So in the end, I think we can feel pretty good about our efforts, especially given that participation in 2021 was still higher than those pre-pandemic levels. Okay, I think um, I, I had added a, a slide back in here to uh, remind you all of our ad spend, but I'll just kind of refresh your memory verbally. Um, so our search and social ads were each around 20,000 um, and then Google display and YouTube combined the ad spend was about 8,000. So as you can see, um, Google search generated uh, 746,000 in sales, 6,000 in sales came directly from social ads. Display and YouTube combined uh, generated about 1,000 and 39,000 in sales came from our retention emails. And um, again, I think there's just a little bit of content uh, missing here, but I will say that we also looked at these licensed sales in through the lens of um, retained customers. Um, and so we looked at our Google search conversions um, and 34% of all those uh, making purchases were retained customers. 40% of our social conversions were made by returning customers and 42% of display and YouTube conversions can be uh, attributed to retained customers. So pretty pleased overall with those, with those numbers. Um, and just another note before moving on, these numbers listed here reflect transactions that were made directly after clicking on an ad that we tracked using a UTM code. We used to always, we used to also track and report on conversions made over a longer window of time, knowing that customers often take a while to decide to buy a license after interacting with an ad. Um, but as most of you probably know, um, changes in iOS tracking have made it more difficult to rely on those conversion, that conversion window data. And also the new iOS opt-out privacy features have likely made a substantial impact on the reported revenue and transaction totals. And one more note, um, we have not uh, performed a lift analysis on these numbers for 2021 sales. So that was a mouthful, but um, you know, even with uh, these problems that we experience quantifying sales, you know, we can turn to other means to measure the, the impact that our campaign had, and that would be engagement. So we highlighted the fantastic local fishing opportunities, reminded anglers of the benefits of fishing, provided a wide variety of fishing classes and learning resources to keep them engaged. Our social ads were seen 3.5 million times and received nearly 60,000 clicks. Display and YouTube ads were seen 2.1 million times and received 13,000 clicks. We invited returning and lapsed residents and non-residents to buy licenses and hit the water. Those search ads were seen 168,000 times and received 72 clicks. And another little missing visual here that I'll just tell you verbally um, was that our email engagement was also um, incredibly high. Um, our renewal email had a 33% open rate and our phishing class follow-up emails had an unheard of 69% open rate, you know, showing that those class participants were really eager to get more fishing resources from Mass Wildlife and that we had definitely reached the right audience. That felt really good seeing that those results. And as I mentioned before, all of that 
fishing content that we had spent so much time creating uh, was just very popular during the campaign, but also uh, organically outside of the campaign. Um, that new content that we generated um, had at least 40,000 organic page views with an average time spent on each page of about four minutes, indicating that users were really taking time to read and absorb the phishing information. Other findings from, from looking at our results, the overall demand for phishing licenses was lower in general. So despite a 22% drop in search volume, our campaign still made, maintained solid returns. Phrases, um, buying online and mobile friendly tool performed the best for us in search. We had success with our non-resident targeting, nearly 9,000 transactions and about 200,000 in sales can be attributed to those non-resident ads. Display and YouTube ads received a relatively modest ad spend, but were really important for retargeting and engagement. Ads retargeting our customer list generated the highest transaction volume overall for our display campaigns and had an impressive display conversion rate of 1.8%. Our events filled quickly and many participants said that they heard about the events through social media. We can feel confident that we were targeting the right people when promoting those classes. Okay, now we're gonna look ahead to what is next. Um, we're really excited to branch out in 2022 for the first time. Uh, with some Spanish-speaking content. Our outreach to Spanish-speaking anglers and potential anglers has already begun. We're going to spread the word about local fishing opportunities, learn to fish classes and resources to the hundreds of thousands of Massachusetts residents who use Spanish as their first language. We recently found out that we were awarded an RBFF grant to fund this project we're so thankful for the continued support of the foundation. Um, we're going to work to identify several focus communities with high growth potential to host fishing events and build partnerships. We'll select locations that have large Spanish speaking populations and also that contain water bodies that will provide opportunities for in-town fishing. To further engage Spanish-speaking anglers, we're going to rely on some, the same types of marketing channels that we used in 2021. Uh, interestingly, the marketing agency we worked with last year in, identified some relatively inexpensive opportunities to reach Spanish-speaking constituents through search. Before launch, launch, we plan to create Spanish language fishing content to reach brand new anglers and support and welcome those who are returning. This content creation will serve as a foundation for our 2022 campaign and also provide helpful online resources for Spanish speaking residents in the years to come. And another project that will affect our outreach next year and into the future is our new licensing system. We launched our new Mass Fish Hunt system on December 1st of last year, and we're already enjoying some of the benefits of the new system. We used to have a .com domain for our licensing system, and now we have a mass.gov subdomain that serves to build trust in the customers who visit the site. We're also eager to see if this improves our search campaigns in the future. The new site requires an email address and password to log in. And I've heard others uh, today talk about how important uh, having actual working customer emails are. And we're excited to um, increase our ability to communicate uh, users and to you know, target users and build lookalike lists. 
with those email addresses. And customers now have the ability to set it and forget it with our auto renew feature. Right now, the auto renew option is the default setting. Uh, we're anxious to see what impact this has on sales and churn rates. And soon, as I mentioned before, for the first time ever, we will have events registration incorporated and connected to our licensing system. And we'll also have outreach tools um, to support communication with event participants and licensed buyers. We're really looking forward to the ability to engage with our customers from the time they show interest by clicking on an ad and along their journey to registering for a class, then buying a license online, and beyond to encourage next steps and continued participation. Other tools on the horizon include automated drip campaigns, which will allow us to communicate with customers more e efficiently, uh, and texting so we can deliver phishing updates and opportunities in a way that's most convenient to our anglers. And with that, uh, that wraps it up. Um, and I'll open it up to questions. All right, thank you, Emily. Um, any questions from people here in the room in person? And while we're waiting for questions, I can also um, just mention um, that we'll have, I'm not sure if it's in the room, but certainly at the conference, um, Eddie McKenna is, is there from Mass Wildlife and Chris McCarthy as well. Um, as far as our plans for next year, um, or excuse me, for 2022, um, Eddie is, is working really closely with that. So uh, feel free to, to track him down and, and, and chat about the 2022 plans, um, but certainly also happy to, to take some questions, but wanted to point out that we've got some Mass Wildlife folks at the conference. Hi, Emily. My name is Chelsea. I'm from the Maine Department of Inland Fish and Wildlife. And I was wondering how you determined that Spanish would be your next language to venture into um, and how you guys got to that kind of realization. Well, um, you know, we know that Spanish is the, the top language spoken um, in Massachusetts besides English. So um, that alone was was enough um, to to kind of focus our attention there. Um, we know that there are other resources that are um, available for Spanish, so it seemed like a logical first step. We we um, have not um, even as an agency uh, we're, we're just now kind of beginning beginning to kind of dip our toe in the water as far as. Um, you know, getting things translated. Um, and I think that Spanish was just kind of um, just the logical very first step. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll see where, where that takes us. We have some um, really good partners in our, um, the state website, our Mass.gov website, um, who have some expertise. They're still learning too uh, from some outreach that they've been doing around, you know, COVID outreach. Um, and we've kind of had some preliminary meetings there. So we're kind of hoping to, you know, start out slow, rely on our partners to kind of inform, you know, some best practices uh, and then take it from there um, and see how much we can scale. So, um, Rachel, you have a virtual, well, we have one more question here in person, and then we'll get you for virtual. Hi, uh, Ian with Idaho Fish and Game. I was curious, uh, I thought the working with the Department of Transportation was an interesting idea and a, a great idea. Um, so can you talk about what those billboards were, if they were like traditional billboards or kind of like road closure signs? 
Um, and then any, any maybe value that you provide to the Department of Transportation in addition to what, what they provide you guys? Sure, yeah, um, that's a kind of a, a fun one to talk about. We have um, kind of in a whole separate part of our agency uh, some, some partnership with the Department of Transportation regarding, uh, you know, wildlife road crossings um, and, and trying to kind of do some, some monitoring and kind of problem solving uh, there. So, so kind of through that relationship, we heard about this uh, program that it, it, it allows uh, government agencies to to you know essentially apply for space on billboards and they're electronic billboards um, and um, we had to turn in all all kinds of different sizes and shapes so. There are a lot, I mean, ranging from the huge ones along the side of the highway, and then there are some smaller ones that um, that we had to kind of design the ratio to, to fit. Um, and so what happens is um, you, our content is just kind of fed into the rotation, and there are other kind of users in there. Some are paid, some are the Department of Transportation just getting their message across. We actually had applied for this two years ago, and that was, again, right on the verge of COVID. And they just said, your stuff is not going to is not going to show. Don't even don't even try have too many, you know, other messages to um, that will kind of crowd yours out. Um, so the, the the negative there is we don't get a lot of data back. We asked after our our um, PSA was up for a couple of months, oh, okay, can you tell us anything about how often they showed? What parts of the state did they show? And they just, they just said, we know that they did show. We had people um, that we knew who had seen the, the billboards. So they did in fact show, you know, so they just are kind of cycling through, um, but they couldn't give us you know, any details as far as how often they were shown. We did create a specific web landing page um, that was hidden from search, and we created a shortened URL, um, mass.gov, uh, try phishing, I think. Um, and we did get some traffic to that page. So, um, you know, but that's, again, hard to quantify because, you know, Hopefully, if somebody saw it, they didn't necessarily have to remember that short URL. Uh, we were promoting our free fishing weekend. Maybe they went home and just searched for it. So, you know, definitely a, a really low effort and um, great that it was that it was free. Um, and I'm not sure they, they might have similar programs in, in other states, but uh, I think we'll, we'll do it again. We'll do it as often as, as they'll let us and, uh, you know, kind of kind of just take advantage of that space. Great. We have a couple questions virtually. Rachel, go ahead. The first question was, who is your new license vendor? Our new license vendor is Calcomine. Great. And the second question is, from all the social media results you had while promoting fishing licenses, do you know how many conversions you had? Uh, like how many fishing license sales were related to the promotions? Uh, probably, I don't off the top of my head. Um, we, you know, we had the revenue generated. Um, and so, yeah, um, we could probably, we could probably get that. And I will say, I don't know, maybe our presentation isn't, isn't still up, but, um, you know, certainly feel free anybody to, to reach out to myself or, um, uh, or Nicole, um, and we can get that kind of information. Um, I know that we do have a case study. I'm not sure if it's posted on the RBFF site quite yet, but a specific question like that, we could probably get you the answer to pretty, pretty quick. Thank you, Emily. Welcome. Emily, it looks like we're good virtually for questions, and it looks like in person as well. One last chance here. 
scanning the room. Nope, I think we're good. So thank you very much, Emily. You're welcome. Have a good conference, everyone.